The questions we're addressing uh, relate to how genes function and specifically how they remember where and when they're supposed to be functioning. In other words, when a gene is turned on and turned off. And even more specifically, we're concerned about the sort of memory component. Once a gene has been turned on or off, how does it remember that state for long periods of time? And that's an area that is called epigenetics. DNA methylation is one of the most well-studied and classical marks of this, in this field of so-called epigenetics. So it's a slight modification of one of the bases of DNA that's put on after the DNA is made. And it's essentially a mark on the gene that says whether the gene should be on or off. Generally, if there's more methylation on a gene, that's a signal that the gene should be off. And when a gene needs to turn on, often the methylation will be removed. And so um, a big goal is to understand exactly the mechanisms by which this methylation gets put on and taken off so that we can understand how genes can remember whether uh, they need to be on or off at any particular time. A very important aspect of cancer is the regulation of specific genes. And uh, particular genes, especially genes such as tumor suppressor genes, uh, when their gene regulation um, goes awry, that is often uh, thought to be one of the causes of cancer. So tumor suppressor genes are genes which tell the cells not to undergo unregulated cell division, and if those genes are mutated and so their function is lost, that is one obvious uh, way that cancer can develop, but another important way is if the genes are inappropriately methylated and shut down. That is another way that those genes can malfunction and that you can have, uh, have then uh, cancer. I think one of the most substantial changes that I've seen in the life sciences is in this area of genomic research. Uh, the ability to look simultaneously at all of the genes uh, of, of a genome and to uh, make m millions of measurements uh, at the same time has really given us a more of a systems view of various processes, including DNA methylation. I think the new Terasaki Life Sciences building is going to be really beneficial for my laboratory in at least a couple of ways. Uh, first of all, we're for the first time in very close proximity with colleagues that have a uh, very similar um, outlook on research as well as using similar techniques. And I think this is going to be really wonderful for our postdoctoral uh, fellows and graduate students. In addition, uh, we were going to be near groups that are studying very different uh, processes. We're just one floor above the Stem Cell Institute. Um, so we'll have uh, fantastic interactions with uh, colleagues down there. Uh, we're one floor below uh, Drosophila geneticists who are taking a very different look at, at things, but um, really can provide us with a sort of new viewpoints on, on our research.